Welcome back, Kaiju fans, to another crisp review. Today we're going to be looking at the original Bandai Creations Rainbow Mothra. And this is, you know, this is the old school um, American version that came in like the weird box that I don't have for this figure review because the boxes don't really hold any value for Bandai Creation figures, so they get tossed. I do believe that this was one of the figures that got released, re-released in the past few years in the um, Bandai EX Movie Monster series, also known as Bandai Got Cheap, reused Bandai Creation figures, and sold them at a higher price. But we'll not get into that. Let's just get into the fact that this is the OG Rainbow Mothra release from Bandai Creations. And I like this figure a lot. So we'll just do kind of your detail like here. Um, these wings look really good. Uh, there's very, very, very vibrant colors, painted pretty well. The pattern looks incredible. I think that this is done exceptionally well. The wings just look fantastic, and there's so much nice coloration and, like, shifting of colors, like the purples to whites to blues to purple again, with the underwing and the way that the orange and other colors are layered on top of that with the patterns. I think that this looks awesome really it's weird to have a godzilla or you know a to not even godzilla more like a toho kaiju with such vibrant coloration like rainbow mothra and it's it's nice to see it captured well in a low price figure like this so the wings on the top sides look absolutely phenomenal i love it so much and then obviously the top of the body the basic pattern it's black and brown with the you know pinstriping and the weird kind of like clover shape right there and then moving on to the front the little furry antenna things on the front of mothra those are blurry because camera there we go those are just this glossy white color and then mothra has bright blue eyes with black outlines and white around the face i'm having a hard time focusing because of how close this is uh, the white dots in the front look amazing they're actually very clean very round can't complain there and then the underside of the wings look basically the same as the top side they're painted exactly the same the detail is not faded here whatsoever thankfully they didn't just like blur it out make it not look that good i think the original bandai has less qual lesser quality on the underside of the wings so i have to give the bandai creation one props there and then the legs are just that weird kind of, they're almost like a tannish color. And then the front of the wings are a much more like, like milk chocolate brown. I guess that's the best way I can describe it. So definitely amazing looking like that. Detail wise, the tops of the wings have nice uh, indents for kind of like, I don't know what you would call them with moth wings. They're almost like the tendons that you would have in an animal but I'm not really sure what that would be described as in bug anatomy, but you can see them branching through. Um, this pattern is actually raised out of the wing a tiny bit, so that gives it some depth. And then you can see where the top wing separates from the bottom wing with this kind of like crease right here. So that looks fantastic. And then there is like this furry kind of texture going on at the base of the wings and at the front side. So that looks really really good and then that kind of same pattern is translated into the top of the thorax and abdomen of mothra and then obviously the other side of the wing is the exact same story so no change there looks exceptional i think the detail work is fantastic for such a low price figure moving on to the front here we have that same kind of furry appearance for the front of Mothra. Very, very nice texture on the eye of Mothra here. And then you can even see all of the individual kind of like openings for the mouth. If I can, you know, get focusing my worst enemy to uh, stop. There we go. So you can see all the little kind of like creases of like, I don't even know if you'd call them like teeth or just like a beak opening for a bug, but that's there and then little kind of protrusions uh, the feathers on the top of the head are a bunch of frills kind of just sculpted in there so they look very feathery very very nice can't complain there whatsoever 
and then the legs and the bottom of the abdomen and thorax have that same kind of furry texture going on and then of course on the bottom of the uh, thorax here you have like that segmentation that you're used to with mothra and then the little uh spiky do on the bottom that mothra has so really really good detail for a bandai creation figure this is probably some of their best work uh, but that's not that surprising considering how simple of a kaiju mothra is and really it's all sculpting and they don't have to worry about seams and stuff like that that much so i really appreciate the work that got done with that kind of detail and can't complain about that whatsoever. Now, what's nice about the Bandai Creation Mothra is there's actually some articulation on the Mothra figure for once, albeit it is not that insane. The front two legs here, they can move forward and backwards, and that's really it. That's all you're going to get. I thought the head rotated. I thought I remembered it rotated, but it's actually glued in place on mine, so that's not really going to happen. So that's really going to be it. The wings, you know, they shift because they're separate pieces, but they're not supposed to move. So you're kind of limited to the uh, little leg things there that kind of like flip forward and backwards. But, you know, that's not bad considering you can use it to actually kind of prop itself up on a shelf and not like lean one way or another like other Mothra figures have problems with. And on the same kind of like thing as the wings here, um, you can see that they are different pieces and they're just kind of stuck in the sides. So you can, depending on, you know, how well yours is assembled, uh, you can see pretty pretty clearly into the body of Mothra every once in a while, depending on the wings sit. Um, but it's not a major distraction. You just kind of have to reposition them a little bit, try to get them in the right spot. And it's not really that distracting. Um, the paint on the back side here is a little offset. So on the bottom, you get a more brown peeking through on one side than the other. But that's really my only two complaints there. Um, it's really hard to mess up Mothra. And then on this wing, on the bottom side, you'll be able to see the branding of when the figure's mold was created. And it was uh, 2002. And then obviously it says Toho Bandai. All that stuff on there is on this wing, just on the other side. So you don't really see it from top down, which I always appreciate. Now, I don't have as many Mothra villains in my collection as I wish because... Ghidorahs and the Garas from the Obscure Mothra films are a little difficult to come by. So the only one that I really do have is the Cretaceous King Ghidorah. So, you know, this is kind of a comparison we get with the only Mothra villain that I have. I would It would be nice to have Dagara to show. It would be nice to have Grand King Ghidorah to show. It would be nice to have Death Ghidorah to show, but those are really expensive and hard to come by. So this is the best we got. Um... Mothra looks like a good size for a Ghidorah, you know, smaller, but not too small. I think the sizing works fine. Mothra being in a six inch line, this being in a six inch line, works totally fine for me. So it's really the best size comparison I can get for the Mothra build. And then for a pretty common other Mothra figure that a lot of people have would be the Movie Monster Series six inch uh, Mothra 2003. This is the Tokyo SOS one. Um, a lot of people have this one, so it's easy to kind of give a comparison of how big this is. Uh, their wingspan, uh, the Rainbow Mothra has a wider wingspan, but not by much, but their bodies are pretty similar size. This Mothra has a larger body than this one, but this one has wider wings than this one. So they're pretty, pretty accurately, you know, the same size. But I really do prefer this design over this one because of just how, you know, vibrant Rainbow Mothra is compared to the more standard Mothra that is this one. Plus, this figure is super glossy and weird on the bottom side, where this one has consistent painting all over. So, definitely like this one. I like the Bandai Creation uh, Rainbow Mothra more than I like the official Bandai um, Mothra 2003. So, props to you, Bandai Creation. You're really, really showing your strengths here. And then lastly, for just a fun size comparison, because a lot of people are going to have this figure, and we are going to be seeing Mothra in the next Legendary Godzilla film. This is the NECA Godzilla 2014, and you can kind of see how big this Mothra is compared to that. It's pretty, pretty tall, pretty wide in comparison. Let's see how long this Godzilla is, and then we'll put Mothra kind of like here as a length. So, you know, you can kind of get an idea of how big this figure is. It's, it's not a small figure by any means so these look good together who knows what mothra will actually look like in godzilla 2 if it looks like rainbow mothra i'm gonna be totally into that so in all honesty i really like this figure i think that this is one of the better mothra figures available 
Um, I definitely, definitely recommend picking this up if you can find this one or if the EX one is still available regularly. Um, definitely grab one of these. It's probably a cheaper option over the uh, regular Bandai vinyl, the traditional, the original release Bandai vinyl, because this is one of the few Bandai creation figures that I would recommend just as much, if not more, than the regular Bandai counterpart, because there's really nothing to mess up with this figure, and there's nothing really wrong with it. Sure, there's some painting mishaps here and there with that be, might being offset a tiny bit, but honestly, that's not a huge deal with how great the colors came out on this figure, and just the design and sculpt overall look fine. There's nothing bad about it. It's pretty exceptional compared to Bandai Creation's previous work. So, if you're looking to get this, it should be pretty cheap. I can't see it being more than 30, probably in between 20 and 30. I think that I ended up getting mine on a clearance rack in Kmart because Kmart was one of those stores that sold Bandai Creation figures. Rest in peace, Kmart. You'll never be forgotten. So, it's one of the ones that you can find, you could have found pretty commonly back in the day. Um, finding this now online, the original release of Bandai Creations might be expensive, but the EX is always an option, so I strongly recommend this figure. It is a very nice looking Mothra figure, and I really don't like Mothra that much. Definitely not one of my preferred kaiju, but Rainbow Mothra and this figure in general are aesthetically pleasing, so you can't go wrong with that. Let me know what you guys think about Rainbow Mothra or this figure. If you have this figure, plan on getting it, you know, just talk to me and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. I appreciate it a lot. As always, liking, commenting, and sharing really helps out my channel. And make sure you're subscribed if you want to stay up to date on the latest kaiju news and crisp reviews.